And in there lies the impossible question. Is free will worth it? Because with free will comes the possibility for bad things. But without free will, aren't you basically dead? Don't you remember? The strong eat the weak, and the strong do eat. Even parasites. Hello readers and digital people, and welcome back to GP Reads. I am your host, Grant Reads, and today we are going back into one of my favorite series of all time from one of my favorite creators of all freaking time, Umami, and the newest episode of Safe Mode, Episode 6, Safety Off. I know I'm super late to the party, but life just won't calm down. Why can't the universe just chill out, Ara? Why can't it just chill out? And for those of you who don't know what safe mode is, safe mode is a sequel to Interface. It is actually the world within the interface and how things work there. A bunch of spirits trapped in a computer, and they thought this would be like this perfect afterlife that they made for themselves, but a lot of the human problems creep in again. But anyway, we're just gonna jump right into it. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't notice this the first time I watched it, but it's like meteor shower. Also something I didn't notice before is the sky kind of looks like Earth. It looks like continents on the Earth. And we got more pink animals. Mischief is spreading. You know, the color palette within the interface is a lot of yellows and blues and like darker, richer shades. And the pink kind of sticks out. It's very contrasting. So I'm wondering if every time we see pink, if that's actually alluding to mischief. And I had actually thought of the two being similar before. When Smear mentioned Alana, that she needed to stay home because it's dangerous outside, it did allude a lot to me to the pandemic. But now you can realize just how close this mimics how things went. Everybody's trying to be so overly safe that they're not living anymore. And while being in safe mode does help, doing it indefinitely, it can cause more damage than the actual thing you're trying to avoid. We see the safety completely crash. I'm guessing this is the core of the interface. And as you can see, it, it seems to be two clashing powers, two clashing mechanisms. We have the blue, which is the core, but then we have this pink wrapped around it. Like, Mischief has stretched himself around the core and is trying to change it. You can't be perfectly safe no matter where you're at. You can be safer, but true safety is just not possible. When you try to force it, the only thing you do is enslave people. Another thing, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but the giant orb exploding when everything is kind of away from it, it looks a little bit like the actual CV. And where do we lead? But Club 404, which is like an error, which I think is funny. It's like a glitch within the system. And what color is it? The building's front is mostly pink. Now, until this point, there hasn't been anything alluding to, like, a rebellion or people actually siding with the glitches or siding with what Mischief is doing, changing the interface. But now we're kind of getting a little bit of a hint that there may be some people that are either changed to side with Mischief or just siding with Mischief for their own volition. We've also got the yellow things on the sign, like the yellow crests on Mischief's head. A lot of these things just match Mischief way too much, like he's imprinted himself onto it. And then we've got zombie Mr. Greetings again. And his window is definitely glitching out. <laughs> Can't seem to get it down. And this is something I didn't notice before, but there's blood on his tie and on his face. Like, did, did Mr. Greetings just kill someone? I've taken the liberty to uh, respawn your vehicle. It doesn't seem to be working very well. <sighs> In case you haven't noticed, the corruption you're supposedly quarantining is rapidly spreading through our infrastructure. <laughs> Luckily, the new autopilot program does work. I know this because on my way over, I was distracted by the moon splintering into a thousand shards. Wait, so was that thing the moon? Something else needs to be noted here is the interface is slowly slipping into more and more automation, kind of like what's happening in our world, where eventually the machines will be in control and will basically just be slave units, or maybe even energy sources like the Matrix. Autopilot. 
Driving is one of the few things left to enjoy. I shouldn't be able to find you this easily. Ironically, at Club 404. Of all places. Our most vulnerable will be the first and most affected by our intruder. Vulnerable? <laughs> that is a charitable way of describing the lost. See, in adding more safety to the world, they're ripping away the things that actually make life worth living. So Mr. Greetings is still holding on to the idea that people that don't subscribe to his beliefs or his mission are basically lost. He is so incredibly absorbed into his mission to fix the world. Even within the interface, he hasn't changed. Little tic-tac man. <laughs> And he's holding a pink boombox. I'm about to make a whole lot of friends. To make friends? Or to spread the cause? Or is that what he means by making friends? And then it shows this odd imagery of Smear sitting on the flower, snooze button. And he's in this open field, all these spiders crawling toward him. You know, snooze button's almost seeming symbolic of like his obliviousness to accept that the reality that Greetings has built, this world that he's defending, is bad. And in his ignorance, he's being approached from all sides by Mischief. Mischief may convert him yet, and when he does, that's probably going to be the turning point. Or it could just be symbolic of how he feels, like he's completely surrounded by the problem, but just can't quite seem to stop it. Your particularities for conducting yourself the old way are not constructive to our goals in the present. <laughs> and does that rendition remind you of anything? Greetings! His mission was to return the world to the way it was before, but then he changed his mind when he thought that the spirits could all combine into this deity, and he felt that he was basically being called to do this thing, this mission, and thought he could maybe bring the world into something better using the spirits, aka the interface, instead of going back to the way it was. And it kind of seems like he's turned his back on the interface and is kind of doing the same thing here because things aren't going the way he planned and he has to have control, so he's wanting to bring this world into this controlled, automated state. The archetypes are merely weights used to form the structure of our lives. They are not to have lives of their own. Evil flourishes among that spectrum. And then he's saying that he basically allowed them to have these archetypes so they could have the structure of life, but he didn't want them to have lives of their own. The mask is slipping. He didn't want them to have a free world. He wanted to control them in a perfect world, because he thought his calling was to bring about a perfect world. He's like a cult leader, basically. <laughs> or a major CEO at some tech companies. I spent my life's work trying to reset Earth to its natural state, only to find myself repeating myself in this simulated one and confirming that's what he was doing originally in his own words i spent my whole life trying to reset the earth to its natural state only to find myself repeating myself in this simulated one i know what you were designed for and what you are capable of but you're now plan b if smear is now plan b Oh, those deities he was building in one of the earlier episodes. Remember this? That's now plan A. He's going to make a new cami to just force reset everything, to force everything into this automation. Holy crap. Even Smear, his top program isn't safe if it doesn't fit the perfection of his imagined world. It seems like even the original cami wasn't safe. See this hand of cami? Well, there it is dead in the desert at the beginning of this episode. Or could it just be there because Mischief killed cami in the original series? Should the Colonel be incapable of destroying the virus, they will be disposed of. And likely the rest of us too. But if you are deemed incapable, you will be disposed of. Who does Mr. Greetings think he is? He thinks that calling is like divine or something. I guess that's fitting for him to make his top program look like this depiction of the Christ, then. Remember, I have your best interests at heart. And that same excuse, I have your best interests at heart. That just sounds like a mega corporation, doesn't it? 
we we know your BS. <laughs> We're not falling for that. We have enough of that in the real world. We know exactly what you're talking about. He gets frozen. He's glitching out, so I guess we'll see what happens to Mr. Greetings in the next one, but he may be in trouble. Soon enough. And then we enter Club 404, and there's a lot of interesting symbolism here. A lot to break down. First thing, they're looking at hex code again, and this reminds me a lot of the hex code that they were feeding into the new Kami. So I'm wondering if they're either looking for something, they're reading the data, trying to find out what's going on, or if Mr. Greetings is basically trying to reprogram them and brainwash them right here from the cafe. That makes you wonder if he does this everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, we'll all be together soon. And then the weird little Tic Tac ghost keeps saying this really weird statement that at first glance just seems kind of goofy, like he's just a silly guy. But when you really sit back and think about it, he keeps telling when we'll all be together soon. And he does this in a way as if it's like an inside joke, like they're already in on it. I think this might be a call sign for those who are aligned with Mischief, if Mischief does have an actual embodiment in this world. And again, what does this bartender look like? Looks like a certain V-I-R-U-S, doesn't it? You know, that is actually very reminiscent of an actual bartender. They had to put on many faces to be able to relate with all their customers and keep up the chit-chat, you know? They're almost like a life coach in a way. We'll all be together soon. And then we've got this mysterious ghost that actually goes by Abstract Mommy in the credits. While the little Tic Tac guy seems to be called Mysterious Ghost. And what color is her hair? The same pink as the Tic Tac Ghost's boombox. And she seems to be a higher level spirit in here. She has the blue skin, more humanoid shape. She reminds me a lot of Smear. I'm thinking she might be a hitman since she, you know, she's sitting there with a freaking machine gun on her table. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that because we'll all, we'll, we'll all be together soon anyway. So he might actually have mischief in his mind. <laughs> He's more so alluding to either everyone being free of the interface and being together soon, like in the afterlife. When people die, they all say, we'll be together soon someday. I wonder if he means we'll all be together soon, as in the interface is going to be destroyed and they'll all be set free to go to the actual afterlife or something. Or if it's more so all the people who are infected with mischief or converted by mischief are all going to meet together to take on the interface and to either convert it or set themselves free from it. I think this definitely solidifies that there is some kind of rebellion going on in the background. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. You clean I mean, up, crew guys. You're here too soon. You can't get in the way. Okay. And they're definitely, because she said, you clean up, guys. You're here too soon. So she planned on doing some kind of assassination or hit here. And whatever this group is, um, they have a cleanup crew, and that's supposedly him, I guess. She recognizes him. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the bartender, and this is where everyone's odd look is explained, the kind of anonymous look. You know, it's funny, the white mask anonymous. I feel like it's alluding to that as well. The proxy is what's keeping everybody safe here. And that's why everybody looks like that. Heck, we don't even know what he really looks like. It looks like he's actually in a proxy. So these might actually be encryption keys in front of their faces. We don't serve drinks here. Relax. I'm just... I have to be extra cautious about who I talk to. And he said he has to be extra cautious about who he talks to. Definitely drawing lines in the sand here. And there's a proxy with a gun waiting. Last week, I was robbed by a bunch of resistors. Can you believe that? Criminal scum everywhere these days. And concrete evidence that there are resistors. There's a resistance building. As the bartender says, I was robbed by a bunch of resistors last week. Your power is illegally operating during safe mode. Had you been closed, nothing would have been stolen from you. Does this not sound super familiar to what actually happened with the governments and everything? And then the ultimate rebuttal. Except I'd be broke. I get stolen from either way. Cause I ain't making any money. Yeah, they wanted you to stay home, but yet they wanted you to continue paying your bills. Like, where did they think all these savings were coming from? Did they really think that everyone just had these thousands and thousands of dollars just sitting back in the bank? I mean, how blind can you be? These, these politicians and things, 
just really don't understand how real life works, do they? <laughs> and those those little thousand dollar handout packages? Yeah, that didn't make up for a full-time job, I'm sorry. I need to wake up. That's not where I was planning for this video to go today. Listen, if you're gonna stay here and chat, don one of these masks. <laughs> and then something else that sounds familiar. If you're gonna stay here and chat, don one of these masks. I mean, yeah, it's important, but at the same time, with all these precautions, you weren't really living anymore. And that's why we couldn't do it indefinitely. But anyway, in doing so, they're not actually there. They're not interacting with each other. There is no people. Everyone's just kind of these blank canvases. And you notice they're all sitting at different tables facing away from each other so they don't infect one another? Makes you question, what are you willing to give up to be safe? Even though you can never truly be safe, it's an illusion. To have some semblance of safety, to have the illusion of safety, what are you willing to sacrifice? And I think that's the main lesson to be learned in this video. If you deny yourself identity in place of security, doesn't that allow wolves to hide among sheep? If we're talking in proverbs, you can flee from a wolf, but you may run into a bear. He's saying that in running away from a problem, you can actually run into a bigger problem. In trying to find these resistors, these people that are changing into more mischief, more free beings. I think he's saying in focusing on them, we're ignoring the real problem. I think there's a second group of resistors that are violent. They just want to destroy the interface, basically kill anyone who's for the interface, extremists, so to speak. And these particular people, I think they're trying to kill Smear <laughs> because he's uh, working for the system. Sometimes people trying to fight the oppression become the oppressors. Bears are riddled with parasites. And he says bears are riddled with parasites. He just sees these people as parasites. So he has no remorse in taking them out. So again, extremism on the other end. And it seems like the interface itself is not happy about this death, about the perfection, the illusion being broken. Because look on the back of these bullets, they're sad. <laughs> and they're made from code within the interface itself. The interface is sad about what's happening here. Now they're just riddled with bullets. But then the assassin lady, or whoever she is, she shoots Samir, takes him out. But I don't think she was going for the kill. Seems to me she was just trying to wound, and she's probably going to kidnap him. So going forward, we're probably going to see some kind of interrogation or a ransom situation with Smear. Heck, he may even end up switching sides. This may be where everything turns. We'll see. All I know is extremism on either side is not going to help anybody. Never does. That just causes a new problem. So what'd you all think? There's a lot going on. <laughs> it's definitely picking up. I can't wait to see what happens next. It's only getting more and more intense, more and more exciting. I think the first part was really good and it really needed that build up to show how zany and how beautiful the interface can be. But now we're getting into the more serious situations, the dangers that a world like this could pose. And that's just, that's so beautifully written. And again, I can't wait for the next episode to come out. But until then, as always, keep your eyes wide open and never stop reading. I'll see you all. Oh, and one more thing before I go, I will be doing a full dive explained video over the first part of safe mode. That's episodes one through five really soon. So look forward to that as well. Thanks so much for watching. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and channel members. Thanks to you, I'm able to do what I love. CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jebra Moldens, Free Spirit Katie, MC Darfur, Vexus, Agniska, Granny Monster, Nightmare Luna, Lily Ardad, and Elliot the Epic 242. Really, thank you so much for everything you do. It means the world to me.